Hello, I'm Barney Ronnie and welcome to this Guardian World Cup video. The draw has just been made in Bahia and we're all still reeling from the results, so it's time to digest uh, exactly where it leaves us ahead of next summer. England have been drawn not quite in what people have been calling a group of death. I'm not sure I completely go along with that. It's a tough group, it's more maybe a group of serious convalescent illness than, than your actual death. Uh, and there are a couple of groups that are considerably harder. I think obviously the headline thing will be they've been drawn to play in Manaus first up um, against Italy, uh, which Roy Hodgson has been good at putting a brave face on about. He said, well, it's two European teams playing in the heat of the jungle, albeit the jungle winter. Um, Roy himself has never actually been to the Amazon. Um, he may find actually it's a little more clement than he thinks. And Manaus is a beautiful town, it's got a lovely opera house made from Italian marble and plenty of other nice things about it. Um, personally I think uh, it's slightly disingenuous to suggest Italy are going to be troubled by the conditions as much as England, given that Italy played England off the park in a chilly Kiev uh, just last year uh, and made them look absolutely exhausted by about the 60th minute. Uh, Andrea Pirlo, who was pretty much the only grown-up on the pitch that night, uh, is injured at the moment, but we're expecting him to be fit for the World Cup. And he looks like the perfect player for the jungle. Uh, running has never really been a feature of his game, uh, and he will continue to conduct this Italian team. And unless England have done something drastic in their planning, uh, I can only really see that one going one way, unfortunately. After that, they, they head down to Sao Paulo, uh, where they'll play Uruguay, which is also a very difficult game. Um, Uruguay, of course, won the World Cup last time it was played in Brazil in 1950, which isn't particularly relevant. What's relevant is they have a pretty good team. And they, they also have Luis Suarez, who has a bone to pick with the FA. And may, I mean, he's, he's going to torture England's defence. It will be a difficult night. Uh, after that, they go to Bella Horizonte, a scene of England's greatest World Cup humiliation to play uh, the supposed Minos Costa Rica, who are actually a very decent team and uh, gave USA a very good game recently and uh, who are going to make England struggle again. Uh, it, that game has got a slightly nightmarish World Cup experience written all over it. Uh, England may be lucky, they may already be out by then, but I, I suspect they will probably need to win it. And I mean, who knows, maybe we'll see the best of them. If there's anything to be said for England's World Cup hopes, it's that the way Roy Hodgson tends to set his team up, they are better suited to playing better teams. They're very good at defending space and denying another team room in which to play. They've beaten Germany and Spain in the last couple of years. Uh, so you know, who knows, possibly they can find a formula to, to restrict uh, supposedly more uh, technically adept opponents in difficult conditions. Against that, England have a history of losing against the first decent team they come up against in competition. So. Uh, personally, I'm not that optimistic. I think they've done really well with this group to reach the World Cup, and it's brilliant that England are there because this is going to be a fantastic World Cup. But I don't see them getting out of that group. I hope that they'll do well and there'll be a sort of pyrrhic uh, victory in the final game. But I think uh, that England's group will see Uruguay and um, Italy, possibly in that order, going through, and England a brave third. Looking at Group A, uh, Brazil's group, uh, I think I can only really see Brazil and Mexico going through from that. Um, Croatia aren't the team they were. Cameroon, I'd like to see do well because Cameroon and the World Cup just go together. But I see Brazil and Mexico going through from that. Group B has got to be Spain and Holland, I'm afraid. Chile, uh, a lot of people's genuine dark horse for this competition, but I just think Holland got too much World Cup pedigree. Group C, Colombia and Ivory Coast for me. Can't see it going any other way. Uh, glad to see Ivory Coast having a decent group this time and hopefully they can they can do well. Uh, group E, I see France and Switzerland going through. Sorry, South and Central America. Uh, group F, I see Argentina and Nigeria making it through. Bosnia and Iran, um, Bosnia's first World Cup. Decent players, but uh, it's a new experience for them. Uh, group G, I can see Germany and Portugal going through. Uh, Ghana have got a decent chance, but I've picked Portugal as my... Uh, outsiders to, to actually maybe reach the semi-finals just because they're in they're in Brazil. They have a brilliant, obviously one brilliant player and a decent team. And Group H, I'm going for Belgium and Russia uh, just because they're the best two teams in the group. I mean, looking at that, it's slightly disturbing prospect for uh, African teams who may end up with two teams in the knockout stages by my reckoning, which will be Ivory Coast and Nigeria. Hopefully they can kick on from there. 
and not particularly great for South America either. I see another, for all the fact that it's in South America, I probably see another vaguely European-centered World Cup with South America probably providing two semi-finalists in Brazil and Argentina. But what do I know? It's the World Cup and it's a very exciting draw has been made and I think everybody's really looking forward to it now.